Hey guys, Khalid from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here. And I want to do this little segment with a few journalists that have been in the industry and have really worked the hard yards and experienced amazing things in cricket. I'm here with Dan Gallen. He's worked for quite a few um, different companies, but I want him to introduce himself to you and tell him, uh, tell you, tell the guys a little bit about your history. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Khalid. Uh, great work with the new publication. It's it's great to see a, a fresh voice in uh, in South African cricket, which can feel a little a little stale. The same old people telling the same old stories. So well done to you and the and the cricket fanatics team. Perfect. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Daniel Gallen, a freelance sports journalist, mostly cricket. Cricket's always been my passion. Um, I played not very well, which is why I now write about it. Uh, had I been better, I, I would be one of the famous people that Khalid uh, chats to. Yeah, I, uh, and I live in the UK. I started my career here working for MWP, Neil Manthorpe's company. Um, doing some things for Super Sports. I've done stuff for SA Cricket Magazine, which is how we know each other. Um, worked for Mail and Guardian for a while. Now I've gone to the UK where I've studied and, and have now graduated. Uh, I do a bit of stuff for Wisden, for the Cricketer Magazine. I've had a couple of pieces in the Guardian and the Telegraph. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, just an absolute privilege to get to travel the world, to get to write yeah. about cricket, the proximity to to guys who, but for faster hands and feet, would be my would be I'd be doing my profession. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a real joy. Yeah, it's a fresh new take in the modern world of journalism where freelancing is becoming bigger and bigger as the the company grows, the sports grows, as as everything grows, as the profession grows. Just tell me what is key to being a freelance journalist in this society, in this world? You have to you have to stay hungry. Um, I think I think the desire to to branch out and, 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 and explore as many opportunities as possible. I think an important thing as a freelancer in this day and age is to get comfortable with the word no. You're gonna, you're gonna get a lot more pitches rejected before you start getting them accepted. But it's almost like playing the guitar or, or learning any skill. The, the the first period is always the most difficult, mm -hmm. and if you can stick through that and kind of get a, a few calluses on your finger, as it were, um, you realize that the jobs come a bit more thick and fast. You start getting your name out there. You build a reputation, and I think because there's so many publications that are that are writing about cricket. You have to find a, a particular niche that that you can infiltrate. So, whether that's being a looking at the at the politics of cricket in, in terms of a, a sociological or historical narrative, which is what I I like to do in my writing, or if you're going to do videos like you do in yours, you know, I think I think the important thing is to find the niche and really kind of stick with that until until you start breaking down. It's difficult, as you know, but it's really rewarding once once it clicks. So, some of your moments or a top moment for you. Either a other match you covered or a particular moment that you saw live covering it as a journalist what is your top moment uh, being at the being at the, the the World Cup final last year at Lords was just I, I, even for the first innings obviously it meandered and you thought okay well this is going to be a, pr a bit of a procession but once New Zealand got on top again and then Ben Stokes started playing that innings there was a growing sense within the crowd and within the press box that something special was happening and but even then no one could have predicted the way it would have ended I mean I I wonder if I'll ever see a, a, a more exciting yeah. finish to a cricket match anywhere be it be it live at the match or on TV and, and that it was at Lords you know the home of cricket growing up you know when I was younger I was always a bit of a cricket nerd and, and there was always the the mythology of Lords and look I wasn't I wasn't thrilled that England won it um, being a South African, obviously, you, you, you never want to see England do well as they are doing here. But no, it was it was just incredible. I mean, I I, I, I I've always got a big hat on in the press box, and I took my hat off, and I, I was almost going to throw it because I, I just didn't know what to do with myself. I'd, I literally lost my mind. Uh, no, it was it was just incredible. I mean, the, the the tide super over. Being at the World Cup was amazing from a professional point of view. Um, going watching South Africa be so useless, but watching the way Fuff Duplessis kind of you know, <laughs> struggled from one press conference to the next, the way Rassi van Dyssen shouldered a lot of the responsibility, watching Otis Gibson, it, so, it sounds tough because these are real human beings, but but from a, you know, as someone who, who builds narratives over these real human interest stories, it was interesting to see South Africa struggle in a way from, from that sense. I mean, you, you don't want to see them struggle. I wanted South Africa to do well, but just being at the World Cup was, was just incredible. And lastly, being 2020, I just want to know what is your top moment in this last decade an experience that you saw besides the World Cup now you've obviously okay. mentioned um, what is your top moment 
I think watching watching Aiden Markram get that 150 which set up the game at the Wonders against Australia which set up the game for then Vernon Philander to, to run through the Aussie batting unit to claim a, a first ever Test Series victory in home soil for South Africa over Australia was was something that, that I will always remember growing up in the 90s and early 2000s watching my heroes like Jacques Cullis and Mark Boucher and Graham Smith just get absolutely trounced on home soil and even before that Gary Kirsten and Alan Donald you know the Australians growing up with the bogeymen of, of, of world cricket they their accents were irritating they weren't friendly and they knew it and they would come to South Africa and just bash our guys so watching watching a new generation of South African cricketers kind of Kaki Sorobada included uh, kind of shake off the monkey that's been sitting on South African cricket's back for such a long time was really special that it came in light of the of the ball tampering fiasco with David Warner and Steve Smith not playing perhaps took some of the gloss out of it but I just think after just th- that whole series was just a great series and and uh, you know like you I'm a big Aiden Markram fan I've interviewed him a couple of times for some pieces um, I'm obviously a big Werner Philander fan I've got, got to chat to him a couple of times and knowing how important it was for for South African cricket to say that we have now got rid of that we can now enter this new decade and with, with renewed hope and optimism in our cricket I thought it was really special so guys we also have a piece on our site that we did some of our writers um, we have Naima and Alistair that wrote their moments of the decade go check that vi- uh, that video out but now just like the guy from what ones from YouTube I'm gonna roll the red carpet out for you and let you give your social media platforms to everybody else oh that's very kind of you uh, you can follow me on on Twitter at Daniel Gallen uh, my Instagram is Daniel underscore Gallon. I'm not so I'm not so savvy with Instagram <laughs> just yet, but uh, you post off your hats, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, you can follow me on, on Twitter for all my articles and videos. Thanks, man.